Jamie. Like Jamie's with us now. Yay. Hey, Jamie. All right. Ready, sir? You ready, Jamar? Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming out to community cooking with the co op. Um, Okay, I, I will, Mary. Oh, you can just click rename and uh, change your name, but we'll, we'll, we'll revisit that later. Thanks, Mary. Um, she was asking about changing the names. So thanks, everybody, for coming out to Community Cooking with the Co-op. Um, I'm Paul Addis. I'm a librarian at the Coos Bay Public Library. My coworker, Joshua Witte, is with us tonight. And um, our community partners over at the Co-op, Jamar Ruff, our chef, and um, his coworker, Tim Bolster, both working in the outreach department at the Co-op. And we have Alan Bartle on the camera um behind yeah. the scenes there there he is hey oh. um so tonight is a little bittersweet for me um because uh, let me let me let me breathe here um i'm really excited for my friend and community partner jamar as he's moving on to greener pastures well i shouldn't say greener pastures He's, he's changing his career trajectory a little bit, I should say. And um, I'm going to let uh, Jamar tell you a little more about that. But I just want you, everybody to know how much the library appreciates Jamar and all he does in the community. And um, we're really happy for where he's going, but we're going to be sad um, that he's not going to be at Community Cooking every month. So we're going to take November and December off, and we're going to regroup in um, January, probably with a different chef. Jamar might join us once in a while, but um, I'm going to let you tell him what you're up to, Jamar. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we have, like, butterflies mixed with wasps mixed with moths and all of that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, community cooking um, with the co-op is going to be shifting in 2023. Um, I think when we first, when this was our brainchild, we were looking at how to make things a little bit more sustainable as well, and then showcasing community cookers that are out here in our community um, and pulling me behind the scenes. So I did get a new um, opportunity. It is working with health equity across Coos and Curry County. And I will still be here at the co-op working behind the scenes and supporting um, where I can. And if there's any time for me to jump into community cooking, I will totally be doing that. So. Um, it totally is. I have I have not done a good job because I did not know how to even communicate this. So thank you Paul, for doing it. I was um, I was asked about this earlier, like, and Tim was like, "Hey, are you going?" And I'm like, "Absolutely not," you know. So, um, but it has been really great cooking along with everyone, and yes, and it's like we all came together during um, COVID when we were like, the world is <laughs> blowing up and we managed to make this our little safe space outside of that. So, um, which all kitchens, my kitchen especially has been my safe space. And so um, in this place, community cooking has been as well. So I'm really excited about um, next steps and what this is gonna look like. We've been engaging some pretty amazing um, folks to come in and um, sign in to cooking. And if you are interested, in cooking and being on this end of things, please reach out to the outreach department as well. Or you can hit me up too. Yes. And you can also email outreach at cooseheadpcoop.org. Jamar will receive those emails. You can express all your gratitude <laughs> for all the work Jamar's done. Yes. <laughs> thank you for all, thank you Jamar for all of it and all you do for the community. We really appreciate it. All righty, well, let's get cooking. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Let's do it. So, oh, okay. All anyway, good, brother. so um, tonight, I I don't know about y'all, but like any like September, I was like, okay, soup. <laughs> like it's soup. I think I got like it was a, like a chilly day in September when I was like constructing the recipe, and I was like, yeah, I'm having soup because I know by the time we're gonna have cooking community cooking next month. It's going to be um, chilly and everyone will be wanting soup as well. So, um, and then we were looking at like what was the healthy diet of the month, which it was rutabaga. And 
rutabagas are something that you see and typically you see like a big rutabaga you don't really see small rutabagas and you're like what can I even do with rutabagas right <laughs> you know they're the same thing like beef like what can I do with that but like the cool thing about rutabagas is that you can put it into soups you can even make it mashed potatoes like loaded mashed potatoes um wow. with rutabagas right never heard of that right. yeah, I like that so, um, but tonight we're going to be making soup, and it's a hearty fall um, soup. We have Stephanie Felizzi here to give us some fun facts around nutrition and rutabagas and turmeric and some of the items that we'll be using. Hello. And you can't have soup without, like, really rustic, chunky bread crumbs to go inside of it. And so I hope y'all picked y'all favorite bread <laughs> and we're going to be making, we're going to be making some breadcrumbs and I use um, farmstead bread, the country loaf, it's near and dear to me um, and local. it's so good so and it is, this was an opportunity to support local um, bread makers. We have Empire Breads and we also have Myrtle Point um, Breads and Lady, Lady Bread. Um, Ladybug bread, <laughs> Lady Bread Bakery. I was like, what's that? <laughs> it's like, say that five times. <laughs> but yeah, so breadcrumbs, I'm always making breadcrumbs. I have different selections, different flavors of breadcrumbs, and everyone should just have a soup and breadcrumb recipe in their back pocket for any time. So, all right, so a starting point. I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. It's just going to hang out there while I start doing my prep for my soup and getting things going. So, um, so everybody turn your ovens on at 400. Yes, yeah, 400 degrees, we're gonna preheat. And then what we'll be doing is first starting out with building our, building our base. So how I like to build my base is I'm gonna start with onions and then I'm gonna start with my garlic. So okay, I'll take this, I don't really need a recipe. <laughs> I will use it. Yeah, I will look at it, look at it to yeah. reference it. But um, so like we're gonna start with our prep. So first thing we'll be prepping is the yellow onions, and then we'll move up to our garlic. But in our pot, we're just gonna um wake up our seasonings first. Cool. So I'll like dice up the onions. Oh yeah. So you can cube it. Um. You don't have to do a rough top because you're going to saute it down. Uh -huh. And all of this, as you see, it is soup season. This is where this is the perfect time to be developing what your veggie stock needs to look like. So when you're making veggie stock, all of this stuff is going to be going into my veggie stock. So I have um, my garlic peels, my onion peels, everything that I would discard from this is going to be going into veggie stock. And you can freeze them and just pull them out later to um, build it. Cool. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in chat or unmute. Or as I often say, respectfully unmute. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you I think you did good. Yeah, good. Yeah, there are some big pieces, so you can just pass back over it with your knife. Okay. Okay. But so we're doing the onions. First, okay, just pass back for us. Mm -hmm. It's soup, it's gonna cook down, right? Um, I just don't, I don't know. I, I like, I don't like it to be too chunky when it comes to my onions, yeah. But my onions are gonna cook down and they're becoming my base. Okay, I'm sorry, is it um, slice the onions or is it so soup? You, can do, you can do a um, kind of like a well. You can do a rough chop. They don't okay. all have to be the same because we're going to be cooking them down. Good question. Oh, sorry, <laughs> come into the frame. Yeah. <laughs> Step into the frame. <laughs> so, um, okay, so I have my onions chopped in, in my pot. Everyone has their favorite spoon, their favorite knife, and their favorite pot that they use in their kitchen. <laughs> and so in my pot, I'm going to do like a tablespoon of olive oil. As my base, that was not a tablespoon, but <laughs> it's always a healthy skyball. <laughs> <spot. laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the recipe calls for salt, pepper, a tablespoon of thyme, and a tablespoon of turmeric. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put my turmeric in just yet. 
but I am going to put my time in there, my time and a little bit of salt and pepper. Whoa. So in a tablespoon, because you have to have a tablespoon of time. <laughs> and I'm just going to wake up, it, wake it up. These, here, this is what I'm going to be calling my aromatic. Let that cook a little bit. I'm not going to burn it, but I am going to let it cook. So I have my pan at a medium heat. And then I'm going to sprinkle some, a little salt and a little pepper. I start out, you don't have to heavily salt your, um, heavily salted because nine times out of 10, when you're cooking for folks, they're going to salt their food anyways. So you don't have to do such a heavy, um, heavy salt. But I did do a sprinkle of, um, maybe like a half a teaspoon if I was measuring of salt and then pepper, they get equal ratios. So right now we got the oil, the thyme, the salt, and the pepper, right? Yeah. Oil, thyme, salt, and pepper. Cool. See, and I'm just earlier toasting it. About how the, Jamar made the soup, and I tried it. It was delicious. And then I went home and made the soup, and I made it, and it was very good, too. Just not quite the same. I'm, really, I, I'm interested in figuring out what's different. And one thing I'm noticing that's different is I think I put the spices in once the broth was already like, oh, okay. like I, I set the liquids in first and then the spices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you said this like wakens it up. A little yeah, bit. and you you know you want to build your base. So did you yeah. saute your onions first? Yeah, I did. The okay. onions and the garlic. I so that's like my that's like my staple. Almost. Yeah. So now I'm gonna put my onions over in there. Cool. I'm gonna let those just cook, and then I'm gonna continue to prep my veggies. So um, Jamar, Michelle was asking, how do you do the veggie stock with your leftover onion and garlic peels? She said, I've never thought to do that. Is it just oh, water for the stock? It's just water for the stock. It's just water for the stock. But then like, as you start, one, it is a really good habit of like, when you start cooking, whether you're doing vegetables or anything, have a bowl right beside your, right beside your prep. So like some stuff is gonna go to the compost, but some stuff is gonna be going towards your um towards your veggie stock. So like onions, garlic, bell peppers, tomatoes, any of those things, those savory um items that you want to use. I try to not use so many different stocks because that'll make your that'll make your veggie stock a little bitter. But what I have found is like if I have my bowl beside me, that's a knee jerk reaction. Then from there, I'm gonna put it in a bag put it in the freezer. And once I get ready to make my veggie stock, once I have accumulated enough um, of items, then I'll put it, my veggie stock on. So some of the seasonings can totally be like salt, pepper, oregano, like different herbs, and then also some nutritional yeast as well is really good inside of it. Nice. So I have my onions sauteing and I'm gonna keep those going. Now we're going to move over garlic. to the garlic. Yeah. Okay. How much One more question. Garlic? Sorry. About oh, no, go ahead, stock. Melissa. About the stock, how long do you boil it for or, or simmer or whatever you do? The soup? The veggie no, stock. when you make your stock. The stock. Oh, the veggie stock. Oh, my gosh. So, like, what you're going to do is you'll start seeing the deepness of color. And the other portion of that is, like, I would maybe, like, boil, like, maybe simmer. I wouldn't simmer, like maybe a medium heat for an hour or an hour and 30, depending on how big. So if you do like a stock pot, you're gonna cook a little bit longer. And then what you do is like you you um you separate all of the stuff. So like then it goes into contact, gold start, it goes into the compost. So as I um what would I what would, what is the word I'm looking for? Like a colander or a strain? Yeah, like I would strain all of the veggies and then I'll have my stock and all of the veggies go to the compost. Oh, keep the liquid. And yeah, you keep the liquid. You can freeze the liquid. Um, if you are a soup maker, you can always keep some out and keep it in keep it in your fridge and then freeze the rest of it. It freezes amazing. So so the peels from the garlic and the onions come out in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the peels is actually what makes it that golden, delicious <laughs> color as well. Really, you use the peels. That's interesting. Uh huh. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, you're That's welcome. Awesome. And uh, now you've created a monster here. So Mar Mary G's asking, will you repeat what you do not use in your veggie stock? And she said, do you use, for instance, broccoli stems, kale stems, etc.? 
So I don't really use the kale, the broccoli stems. Some of the stems, well, and if you use the broccoli stem, I would just suggest to like scrape the outside because then you get to the to the tender bit. But sometimes when you use stems, same thing like if you use parsley stems, it will make it a little bitter. So sure. just be kind of mindful of it. It's already kind of earthy and then it'll become a little bit more earthier as well. So, so you're using mostly root vegetables in your stock. Is that what it is? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Just depending. Yeah. I use tomatoes. Oh, tomatoes. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's it's really whatever. Just imagine what a soup would look like, right? Like all of the things that will that go into like that. Yeah, potatoes, soup. celery. Yeah, that will be the same tomatoes. Yeah, your okay. soup will look like. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, nice. That's really interesting. And Mich Michelle said that's such a great idea to use all that stuff before you compost it. Right. Well, because I mean, and then it's because when it also is a cool way to save some cash as well when you're when it comes to shopping. Right. So I how almost like if you use water in all of your ingredients, if you are using making your own veggie stock, now you have a replacement. And you can control the flavor, how much salt is in it, how many cloves. Is it? That's three cloves. Oh my gosh! You need. Well, I knew you were going to say yes. that. <laughs> three cloves is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to tell me more. But these onions smell really good. And and Steph added that your veggie stock is low in sodium, unlike commercial stock. So. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes. 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 Healthier and more sustainable. Yeah, definitely. Right. I just want to chop onions. I mean, I'll chop some garlic just because. Just because you like to chop. Just, <laughs> it's not because I'm slow. It's no, 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 no. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> now, tomorrow loves his garlic. I do. Yes, he does. Yeah. And FYI. Next week is the perfect time to start planting some garlic. The first week of November. Oh, all right. So get out there and do it. Hope that's the red, red paper of the, <laughs> the garlic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a called Creole. It's um, it's a Creole blend from uh, Myrtle Blend. Yeah, they have all different kinds of garlic. Yeah. Well, they're known for their garlic, by the way. Mm, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Smashing it. And my onions are cooking down. I'm taking it's taking yeah, its time. Spices. <laughs> it's, very, it, it's very tiny. Well, I can add while you're doing garlic that um, there's a trick to getting the most nutrition out of garlic. And that is after you peeled the skin off to crush it under your knife and um, and you're, you can go ahead and chop it, but then you want to wait before you actually put it in the heat. You want to wait about five minutes oh, okay. because it takes some time to develop that compound that um, is actually going to be more helpful for you. So uh, crush it, chop it up, and then wait before you put it in the heat about five minutes. Oh, awesome. So what, uh, what does crushing do for like the nutritional benefit of the, you know, I'd have to look it up to be specific, um, but I know that it it helps to release uh, the nutritional value. Uh -huh. Interesting. Thanks. Does that work for raw too? You just eat it raw? You're still yeah. gonna wanna crush it before you eat it, yeah. And yeah. wait five minutes, right? Wait and wait five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll well, see if, if I, I, know, I think we did a healthy bites on garlic. I can see if I can pull it up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. Not that I know all of the healthy bites. There's got to be a garlic in there. It has to be. Okay. March 2020. I think I've got in my garlic stick. Yeah. Steph, do you have a link you could post in chat? I am going to attach the handout and we'll see if we can find it. Oh, okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Hopefully. You oh, can... it won't let me attach. Yeah, I might not have the attachment thing on. Okay. So. Uh, Steph, are you on the web page for the garlic? Can't even get it to open. Hold on. Well, if it's the Healthy Bites Initiative, it should be on our website, right? Yeah, if we could just post the link. Yeah. So now, 
We're gonna add our garlic to our yeah. right. And so basically, you wanna kind of start with like, what do you feel like is gonna take the longest to cook? So we're cooking with root, root vegetables. So we have the rutabaga that we might wanna go ahead on and, and try. Start cutting up the rutabaga, you think? Um, yeah. I'm just gonna get a um a towel just to wash my. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Alan. Right. Yeah, rutabaga is not a vegetable that, outside of soup especially, that I use very much. Oh yeah. Do you use it for other things besides soup? Like, what do you, what do you like to, or is it a soup vegetable for you? It's it's a soup vegetable for yeah. me. I can do mashed potatoes. I can, All right, totally, mashed potatoes. I can yeah. totally trick my dad, but he might be like, son, I'm going to get you back. Because <laughs> <laughs> he is a meat, he's a meat and potatoes type of person. And so it's like. Is it harder than a potato? Yeah. I thought so. Yes. Stephanie, you want to give us some information on rutabagas? <laughs> Oh, sure. After I'm like, you know, looking deep into the uh, garlic situation, <laughs> I was just typing a message. I'll finish that later. So uh, interesting. Uh, rutabagas are really interesting because they uh, they look sort of like a potato. And like Jamar says, you can crush them like a potato. They're grown in the ground, a root vegetable. But one big difference between the rutabaga and potatoes is that they're part of the cruciferous family. Cruciferous ah. meaning your um, cabbage and broccoli. Oh, and your cruciferous vegetables are <laughs> anti carcinogenic, so they fight cancer. So the rutabaga is particularly different, even though it has a lot of potassium and phosphorus and other nutrients to it, it fights cancer, which is something that big, that white potatoes, even sweet potatoes, don't have. So those sulfur compounds. So that's wow. a key point. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna start cooking. Are you, are you cooking the rutabaga right now? Huh? Yeah. Well, th they're cutting the rutabaga right now, Joanne. Uh, Thank you. Okay. So taking the skin off. Yeah. Okay. So I'll take the skin off. That makes me want to treat rutabaga with a little more respect moving forward. <laughs> yeah, as you should. Yeah. So, Jamar, did you peel the rutabaga? Um, I'm peeling some of it off. I'm cutting um, around it. You don't have to. If you give it a good scrub, you don't have to. Um, but I'm just, just for tonight, I will be doing that. Okay, my question is, your peels, will you use that for uh, vegan oh, or... Oh, yes, you totally can. It's going to my... So I have a stock pile. You get what I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no one laugh. Okay, a couple people did laugh. I got it. <laughs> Good pun. Some Never people, go unnoticed. Okay. No. <laughs> I'll make sure I put that like on a t-shirt. Yes, okay. Joanne, he is putting the, the rutabaga peels in his veggie stock. Yeah. I am getting so good at saving things. Thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> and so what we're going to do, because like it's in the middle of the week, it's Thursday night, we got, we're hungry. And so we're going to make sure that we're not cutting them in big chunks because we want them to cook. We got like an hour and 30 minutes. Well, not an hour and 30 minutes, but y'all can hang out as long as, <laughs> as long as you would like to. But um, we want to just make sure that they are like kind of even. And for those curious, um, Steph just put in, um, the, the nutritional um, information about garlic and that nutritional ingredient. I think it was called, was it Allison? Yeah, Allison, I'm, I'm just looking for it on my website now. <laughs> a little hard. Yeah, I mean, definitely potato kind of. Yeah, so, it reminds me of potato. There's like so a side. Wait, There's ahead, Melissa. Talk. What are we doing? Slicing it? Yeah. So with the okay. rutabagas, we are slicing it. I'm kind of making them not so big because I, I okay. don't want us okay. to be having to boil them for too okay. long. Avocado. Yeah. Avocados are not oh, yeah. in the recipe, but <laughs> this is how thin I have it. It's almost like a thick fry. Yeah. yeah. 
Wedge fries. Wedge fries, yeah. There you go. And you also can grate them down and put them in soups as well. Oh, it's, I like the smell. And Steph just posted the garlic handout, the link to the page. Why um, should I be posting rutabaga as well? Sure, yeah, please. Thank you. Well, Steph that link's not working. It says it's been removed. Uh oh. Oh, it worked for me. Oh, sorry, it works fine for me. Okay. What well. we can do is maybe um, after the after the class, we can send out some handouts. Yeah, I could probably uh, email me. And Melissa, <laughs> maybe try clicking it again because the first time I clicked it, it didn't open, but the second time it did. Yeah, I tried three times. Let me try again. Okay, yeah, maybe it's not. It's saying this shared file or folder has been removed. And then there's on the bottom, it says box.com or box support. Do I click one of those? No, I no. let me go back and see what's going on. Can you open it, Paul? Yeah, but it's the same URL that you posted. Oh, this is on Oregon State. Let me, let me see if I can just pull it up on Coos Head. Okay, so now I have my rutabagas inside. I picked yellow and red potatoes because they're not, they don't take as long to cook like russet potatoes. <laughs> um, and they're a little bit more tender. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna chop my carrots and, and some of these carrot tops, well, they have carrot tops on it. Did you know that you can make pesto from the carrot tops? No, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, you can actually make pesto, like pesto is usually with basil, right? Yeah. Right, right but basil. you can use cilantro or whatever too. Yeah. Yes. You can use char, you can use kale. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So um, how we're gonna do our carrots? So, so because being mindful that it is Thursday night. We don't want, we want to be able to sit down and have dinner and not be still cooking until nine o'clock. <laughs> I have not added any, um, I have not added any moisture or water or stock into my rutabagas because I just want them to saute and join in with the onions and the garlic in my, in the pot. And now we're going to go ahead and start prepping the carrot. And then we'll, um, last we will bring in the, um, potatoes before we put the stock. Cool. And Melissa, I just posted a different link to the um, garlic handout. It. I saw that. I'll try it. Thank you. Cool. No problem. Yeah. Oh, yes, you know. Yeah, we're gonna make them into quarters. Uh -huh. Nana, did you have a question? No, thank you. I just I know that the garlic after before you use that the slice or chopped mashed. A while, then you use as more volume as kind of like like a uh, herb or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's why I see. Cool. Thank you. I got it, Paul. I got it, Paul. Thank you. Excellent. You know what a pet peeve of mine when cutting carrots is well, all the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Jamar, you just cut off the carrot tops, but you did not um, peel them, correct? No. Okay. Thank you. And, well, and I don't know if you guys can I see what these. Whenever I am in the kitchen and I'm, I scrub my carrots. I scrub the carrots. I clean them, and then I use them. I hardly ever um slice them. Peel yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. And I. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but they're using these multicolored carrot bunches they carry at the co-op, and they're just awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I just love, love those carrots <laughs> in my salad. And I will tell you, like, if you use, like, say, for instance, if you use the purple carrots, they will bleed, but your broth won't be, like, clear. It'll have, like, a purple color to it. Yeah, yeah. Purple, yeah. purple soup. 
<laughs> hey, Jamar, do rutabagas grow good here in Oregon? Rutabagas yeah, what, where are they native to Rutabagas? Oh my God! I wonder if Stephanie would know. Stephanie, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had any success, and I don't know if we have. We don't have local Rutabagas anymore. Mm. Good, Good question. question. Someone will Google it and they'll find out. Yeah. yeah. All right, because I, I love Rutabagas. That's Steve. That's me, Steve. I thought Hi, it was Steve. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> We're cooking together again. Awesome. Hey, I love that. I love that. So um, with the recipe, we with talk, wine, of course. Um, potatoes. And so right now in my pot, I have, I started with the olive oil, the thyme. I have to put some salt and pepper. I have root garlic, onions, and carrots. And now, oh. I'm, moving, now I'm moving over to my potatoes. So and uh, I picked these massive potatoes just because, and then there's like one that's a really, <laughs> all potatoes are not round. So we have, <laughs> we have I, I was having fun when shopping. And Stephanie said rutabagas are winter root veggies, so they should grow great here. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you can grow your own, Steve. <laughs> hey, Stephanie. Look at you. I know. I'm the Tim, you're too. doing so great. I, know. I love it how Tim just jumps in now without asking questions. Right. <laughs> He's like, I got this. I've been, every time I do a cooking class, I'm like, Tim, we got a cooking class to do. <laughs> so it's been cool. We'll just we'll from, from the uh, From the onion, onion right in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice potato. <laughs> <laughs> And so for the um, same rule of thumb, if you like your potatoes chunky, you can totally have them in there. But I am doing it oh, the same. Thin. Yeah, I'm doing it the same size, just so that way. Yeah, it's going to cook faster, I guess. It's going to cook faster. But sometimes I like it to be very, I like some of my soups to be very chunky carrots, very chunky potatoes, mm -hmm. and bit, you know. Yeah. I won't say Chelsea again, but it's, it's, it's really my word. Robust. It's robust. Yeah. robust. Okay. And, and Steve, uh, Stephanie recommends um, getting your rutabagas in the ground or a pot before the frost. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll do. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes, it is interesting. Everything's in the pot before you add the water and everything. Yeah. Soup lesson for me. <laughs> I just wanted to like brown some of my vegetables. And... Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And then I wanted them to really get the time to get a little crispy at the bottom to move mm -hmm. it around. And then if you didn't have time, what would be your substitute? Oh, maybe rosemary or basil. Did you love rosemary? I love the rosemary. <laughs> Something like comforting about rosemary it, is. it, it is. makes you think of like the holidays yeah <laughs> and sage i mean oh my gosh but not tonight so i got i'm gonna add a little bit more salt a little bit more pepper and then i'm gonna mix around it i'm gonna add my liquid to it now i think it's gonna be awesome with the time so the recipe called for four cups you might need a little bit more like I need some, yeah. <laughs> I need more than four cups. <laughs> and what you want to do is just make sure that the water is covering your um, it's covering all of your vegetables in the pot. Perfect. In practical magic, they tell you to paint ro uh, uh, plant rosemary by your garden gate, right? Doesn't it ward off evil spirits or something? Oh, <laughs> this time of year, that's up. a good thing to. Yeah. Yeah, with Halloween coming up. I was thinking the garlic. Yeah, one benefit we didn't talk about is the keeping the vampires away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my pot over because I don't get a good boil and I want it to boil. And so, I'm going to crank up the heat, um, let it cook, and then I'll go back in with the turmeric. All right. Yeah, the turmeric was the interesting ingredient to me. I didn't see that coming. I don't know why. <laughs> I 
try to sneak it in everywhere. Sneak it in wherever you can. Yeah. Wherever I can. So um, now I'm going to just clean up my workstation. A so you, you crank the soup up a little? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, I want it to come to a boil. Cool. How's everybody doing in their kitchen? I feel like I have not checked in with the chefs. They're doing good. Amy and Dan are doing good. Done? Carolyn, you doing good? Gotta get more wine. Sort of good. <laughs> more <laughs> wine. Can we help, Carolyn? No, I love this guy. I'm just still chopping my potatoes. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Not no far away. Joelle's doing good. Yeah, if if, if anybody like needs anything, pros. just chime in. Y'all are pros. Yes. Love okay. the teamwork too. Well, we might as well add you might as well throw them. Yeah. Well, I can fill the gap a little bit if you want to talk about turmeric. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Turmeric is um, the high, it's the article that we put in the Food and Nutrition Group newsletter for November, which should come out soon. And um, and also we have a Healthy Bites on it from like 2000 and I don't even know, 2018 or 2000, 2018, we did a Healthy Bites on turmeric. So turmeric is one of the most anti-inflammatory spices. There's a lot of um, research that demonstrates the anti-inflammatory effects. It's also um, been shown to improve cognition, particularly to prevent something like Alzheimer's or dementia, really important. Um, but the active, the key to turmeric is the active ingredient needs to be turned on. And um, so you, whenever you have turmeric, you have to add black pepper. So it doesn't have to be in equal amounts, just that you have one or two teaspoons of turmeric, you want like a pinch or an eighth or a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. So always make sure to have black pepper with your turmeric. So Jamar, I hope you're planning on adding some black pepper with your turmeric. Yeah, and that so I put salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Yep. Salt yeah, we've had plenty right. of black pepper, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Wow. No, That's way. important. And I know that um, we're gonna get towards once the soup cooks for a little bit, then we'll go back and add the um, the greens. I still like to have, I don't want it to be for the greens to disappear. And so sure. it's always the last thing that I add. So I want to at least get, go through making the um, the breadcrumbs and then I'll add, go back and circle back with my kale. How does that sound? Good, okay. Sounds good. Awesome. Okay. awesome. Okay, so have you ever made bread crumbs before? No, never made bread oh. crumbs. And I love bread. <laughs> it's a surprise for me too. <laughs> this is exciting. Okay, so <laughs> whenever I do my bread crumbs, I just get old bread. It doesn't have to be brand new bread, but it can be old bread, delicious bread. Um, my favorite bread. And I don't have too much bread. But hey, Alan, he's getting kind of quiet. Okay. Uh, talk, Jamar. Hello, talk. Hello. He got Maybe a little the quiet. microphone moved, Jamar. Uh oh. Check one, two. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. It's just a little muffled. Oh. Huh. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. I can. Yeah, just go for it. Okay, okay, okay. So I will move this over here. <laughs> the, baking, the baking tray was in front of it, I guess. <laughs> so um, the breadcrumbs. So I like to kind of make them. I use a serrated knife just so that way I can cut a little bit easier. And I want them to be chunky. So you can make them. No breadcrumb has to be the same. <laughs> okay. So what I like to do is I like to just cut. And I'll just, I'll show you how thick I'm gonna make mine. So I'll make them like this thick avocado. Oh, okay. Okay. Like they're big, big and big. thick. Like one, one, one and a quarter inch? Yeah. One and a half? One and a half. Two by four um, thickness. <laughs> or you can like say, well, I want my breadcrumbs to be the same size as my knife that I'm using. So. If you wanted to, you could say, okay, this is how big I'm a, this is how big my breadcrumbs is. I'm gonna flip the knife and I'm gonna cut. 
Right. And Michelle had asked if there was a local bakery that did gluten-free bread. And Joanne responded that um, Empire Bakery does, which is cool. I didn't know that. And I'm addicted to their sourdough. Yes, you are. And so the hill, and now you're going to go and copy what I just did. <laughs> and so I'm cutting. So I made the pass. Now I'm just going to cut through. And that just gives me. It's going to be some healthy breadcrumbs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hard. Nice. You know, like that is. And I'm using whole wheat. Is that whole wheat from Farmstead? Yes. Cool. So. Mm. Yum. Look at bread looks good. <laughs> you have some hummus or something? <laughs> and meal right there. All right, so now you're gonna Got it. complete the and I'm gonna check on my soup paper. That's awesome, Joanne. Joanne said, I'm so proud of Steve. When I met him, he didn't know what a veggie was. And now he tells me all about nutritional values, etc. <laughs> she said he even uses a veggie steamer. That's awesome. Way to go, Steve. The soup is looking good. You're doing great. You still <laughs> boiling the soup kind of high? Yeah. Okay. I was born in Wisconsin, beer and brats, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I come from a similar family, Steve. <laughs> You're doing great. Oh, yeah. Look at you. <laughs> now we have like these big bread crumbs. They're so rusty. And after you cook them, I normally put them in a mason jar. You put them in a mason jar. Mm -hmm. And then oh, you make them ahead and save them? Yeah. Nice. Sometimes I have like a, especially like if, like, I don't know about y'all, but I had so many tomatoes. <laughs> so if I was like roasting tomatoes in my oven, it's like, okay, I'm about to make work from. It's just a kitchen day. All right. Thinking I might have to do this for my soup. You should. I know. And it's, and it's one of those things where like sometimes when we look at certain things, we're like, this is really hard to make. I could not make this. And it's like, no, it's really, really hard. I bet. So I got my my cookie, my um cookie, and then I put parchment paper down. Throw them all on there. <laughs> Okay, so like back to the salt and pepper. So you don't necessarily you don't have to put salt on there. Um, I sometimes do, but the bread is really good bread. So what I'm gonna do is um, I am going to sprinkle some thyme over it. Hmm. Nice. And then I'm going to drizzle some olive oil over the top as well. I knew the olive oil was coming in somewhere. <laughs> Looks good already. Uh, and so my goal is to have the massage them all together. Nice. I want every breadcrumb to have some road, some time on it. Yeah. 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 Okay, so now I'm going to space it out just so that way everything can get every breadcrumb. You see why I was like, like you have to be good to the breadcrumb. So this has, okay, so this didn't look like they had enough. <laughs> <Rub Mary on. laughs> Ten to every individual piece. Yeah. Okay. Cool <laughs> yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to start low. So I'm going to put it, I got my oven going. I'm going to put it in the oven at maybe 400 degrees and for 15 minutes. And while that's in the oven, then I'll get back to the scale. All right. Yeah. Jamar, when I look at that breadcrumbs, all I can think about is a good onion soup with cheese. 
Yeah. <laughs> or like a, like a French onion soup. Mm. Yeah, French onion soup. Oh, Yum. boy. You're killing me, Melissa. <laughs> Between you and Jamar, I'm ready for dinner. And so I have it for right. <laughs> and you can see that it's already turned a little purple, right? Yep. From the carrots. And so that's just going to keep going. We literally just, literally just started. So, not literally just started, but we have a special yeah. And they need to cook down. <laughs> okay, so you're right. Cutting them thin and kind of small as we go out. It's still like, it's kind of soup. You know, yeah. like most of uh, no, the potatoes, just watch them stay firm for so long. And you can watch them if you want to eat, you know? And yeah. you're like, what's going on? Yeah. Or like when you like you try to hurry the process and you're like, oh, like turn it this up. potato was tender, but this potato was really hard. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what I'm gonna do as far as the kale is I'm gonna peel it. I'm gonna take it off the stem, and I'm just gonna do just a couple packs. Okay. So basically, you can. You can use your hands to peel them, or you can hold it like this, hold the stem up, and just go down oh, okay. and just clean them. Yeah. Nice. Another technique learned. Yes. That's so easy. Giving them a close shave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 so we're going back back down the here's another one. Yeah, it's like fun actually. So I always do <laughs> I use four um four stops. And what I like about this one is that it's like I can just rip them and I don't have to have these major pieces in there and right. And by the way, when it comes to like, when you find yourself, if you have kids, when you find yourself in the kitchen and you're ripping stuff apart, this is like a really great time to have a kid coming in the kitchen doing these things. Yeah, sure. I will tell you, growing up, my grandma just like, get out of the kitchen. But it's like, she could not stop me. But what she did was, I was her chopper. I was her prepper. And so she would set me up a little station at the kitchen table. And I used to like shut corn. Did she teach you most of these techniques that you teach us? No. <laughs> well, I don't know. My grandmother is not correct. My grandmother is very much so like, I don't know. I used to be amazed because like when she would like cut collard greens, she would like use her hand and slash and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're gonna cut your fingers too. <laughs> but she never did. And so a lot of the techniques that I've learned has just been me trial and erroring over um and, and then also watching. I think like I watch a lot of chefs, I look at their different techniques, I ask them questions. Um and I think whenever you're in the kitchen, like the learning never just never stops. Totally. So once you got it, you're good. You're like, okay, that technique is off the list. Right. It's right? awesome. And meanwhile, your grandma had like totally different techniques that worked great for her. Right. So she there's no it. one way of doing it anyway. Right. And I used to be like, how do you do that? How are the potatoes working? The potatoes are looking good. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and add my um my kale to it. Well, I'll add a little bit. I'm not going to add all of it because I. It's a little still too early, but I'm just kind of pop some in. I feel like the kale on top of the soup really makes it look really appetizing. Uh -huh. Totally. They've had some beautiful uh, kale at the co op lately. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Kale, it's kale season. Kale. Yeah. If you are in the market for 
hell, let me know. And I will tell me, I will drop you off a of bumper. <laughs> We're getting pretty close here. Yeah. So I'm just cleaning up my face. And then. You got, you got a timer on the breadcrumbs? Or yes, I got my timer on the breadcrumbs. 15 minutes. Good off heat. How are them rutabagas doing? The rutabagas are looking good. Nice. How are you doing, Carolyn? How's everybody's busy in their kitchen? How's everything going? I'm doing okay. I have a confession. I live in a tiny house. Okay. So I wait. So I don't have big pots. So I'm having to juggle here, but it's it's coming together okay. in the end. Cool. <laughs> Holler if you need anything. Well, and the cool thing about that is like when I go into a kitchen, normally I go in and take over a kitchen, right? Oh yeah. Like, I don't like going, sometimes I don't like going out to restaurants. I'm like, I can just, can I just come over your house and just cook? And so I normally don't know what I'm walking into, but I normally bring my favorite knife and that's about it. So um, it is kind of like making it work. No one knows your kitchen like you, right? <laughs> How's everybody else doing? Wait, I have one more confession. I've never touched a rutabaga before. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Carolyn, you're not alone. You've never had a rutabaga either. Okay. So I've probably eaten thing. one at some point, but I don't think I've ever like touched one. Uh, oh, confessions I'm, here at Community Cooking. <laughs> I'm a vegetarian, but I've never eaten it either. There's no vegetarian no safe space. Whatever happens to the kitchen stays on the kitchen until it is uploaded to YouTube. So. <laughs> 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 but this is <laughs> Thank you. My mom used to make a, a potato and rutabaga during Thanksgiving. That was our potatoes. Yes. Yeah, it was good. Always good. Okay, Jamar, you can come to our house, Steve and Joanne's, and use our tiny kitchen anytime. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to put a teaspoon of turmeric. I'm going to put my recipe on. And we're not alone, Carolyn. Melissa had never had the Vegas either. <laughs> oh, I have to put a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon. A teaspoon. It's got the black pepper in there. It's going to activate all the benefits and activate. Nice. So one of the recipes, Stephanie, that I remember we had in one of the articles was like golden milk. Um, but obviously there's no black pepper in golden milk. So are you getting the benefits of turmeric? Right? Turmeric there should have been black pepper in that golden milk uh, recipe. It oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, if we got pepper. left out, that was a mistake. There should always be that little pinch of black no, pepper. No, I'm sure, I'm sure it's my mistake for not noticing it, but that's really interesting. I didn't realize that was a part of the recipe. Well, and you wouldn't probably normally think about it if you're making something like before bed, like golden milk is sort of like hot chocolate. You know, you want it to be soothing and warm and, you know, get you ready for bed. And you usually don't think about pepper. You know, as yeah, being that's getting my away, but, but that little bit of black pepper, and I usually put, you know, I put turmeric and cinnamon and a star anise and a cardamom pod, and then I let that steep for a few minutes, and that um, that little bit of black pepper doesn't um, take over those other flavors. Cool. Nice. Okay, I have some dressing. I think I want to put some more kale into the soup, just because it's like. It's here. So I'm gonna um if you, wanna, if you wanna go ahead and press the board though. Yes, and I, I, got, I got five minutes and I will tell you on the breadcrumbs, we're gonna try to we're gonna test them out. I just don't wanna burn the breadcrumbs. So if if you put them in and say like oh 25 minutes, everybody's oven is different. So I go in for 15 minutes and then we'll look at what they look like and then we'll of course, sample some because everyone should be tasting their food while they're cooking. <laughs> and then we'll go back and if I need to add, if I need to up the up the minute or up the time. Okay. Cool. So people should be checking their breadcrumbs. 
And I feel like dread goes from like oh almost there to like burnt. It does. <laughs> you look away for two minutes. It does. It does. <laughs> I feel like I have a lifelong struggle with my toaster oven. Yeah, <laughs> no, I will tell no, you. The, the English muffin's different than the bagel, than the bread. Yeah, you know, everything toasts differently. Well, you know what? You should put it on. You should put it on your like separate. Like if I'm doing the toaster, I have my base that I'm always gonna toast stuff in because you can always go a little bit. You can go down one more Oh time. yeah, yeah. Um, I always start out with my fake place, and then <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> What does this mean? My problem is I usually keep my bread in the freezer. So like oh. sliced bread is fine toasting, but sometimes other stuff gets a little weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The more dense like bagels and muffins and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're a pro. You're like <laughs> so, okay, you said that you did this recipe at yeah. home yeah. what is different that i that i did right. compared to what you did okay so i i Butter. put the onion and then the garlic in and like the oil and saute mm -hmm. that. and then i think i added the water and the potatoes and everything else like together afterwards okay which seems foolish now but at the time <laughs> it's, it's not foolish <laughs> no, now i see when i see you do it i see you cooking everything together i can tell that you're mixing the tastes i mean you're just you're waking the taste yeah. up together and so you're creating aroma and stuff before mm -hmm. you even add the water yeah, yeah, yeah. so and then, yeah. like the thing when you add liquid to anything, you can have it seasoned, but you know that after you add liquid to it, it kind of changes the flavor. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So, like starting with the herby base and then going back, going back through after you add the liquid to say, okay, it needs a little bit more salt, it needs a little bit more pepper. Right. Um, or sometimes, like depending on the broth that you use, you're like, oh, it's golden. Like if you're using, um, well, like with soup, but like say, for instance, if you're using ramen, I'm all about like the chili oil, the sesame oil, oh, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, when, when it comes yeah. to ramen, I'm all about the oil, you know, and yeah. things like that, um, and white pepper. I mean, ramen's different, now that you say ramen, but like with soup like this, I mean, I had the list of ingredients, and I was like, what's the worst that can happen? Like, all the ingredients are going to go in the pot, mm -hmm. it's all going to cook together, Yeah, and it might not be perfect but it's going to be good <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> the ingredients are good i'm gonna put them all together and it's going to be good you know and so, it was good right it was good yeah it was, good. It was great yeah. nice. it was great and you can drop them in there so okay. i added my turmeric to it and so it was purple it was a little purple and now that the turmeric is in it it has changed oh, it has changed color and so you can you know does it look like curried soup now Oh my gosh, it looks really good. Nice. Well, go look. Here comes Alan. Oh, yeah. And like we start with the kale on top, it starts shrinking and getting smaller. Sure. And so you can start incorporating it little by little. You don't have to do the whole thing. Now, there are some stuff like, you know, when you're cooking with spinach, spinach cooks down very quickly. So. <laughs> You can cut your oven, you can cut your pot off and the and the spinach will be like, yep, goodbye. You know. You throw the whole bag and you end up. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're like, what happened? But with um with chard, almost the same as well. Um, but with kale, it kind of it you can you can play with it a little bit more. Yeah. So I have a minute on my bread crumbs. So would these be perfect for your vegetable stock? Um, um or not perfect. I wouldn't use those. But oh, here's where I'm about to put Stephanie. Stephanie, what do we do with the kale on um, stem? I chop the kale stems up and throw them in my salad. Oh. You could use them um, it, when you saute, for example, you could stick them in the refrigerator. And then when you're ready to like saute onions or red peppers, you can throw your kale stems in with that. Oh. So you could, you know, don't throw them away. They're highly nutritious. Use your kale stems. Jamie and said she awesome. had, Jamie adds hers to smoothies. You could do that too. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Cool. That sounds really good. Yeah. 
or and I, when when we did our class together with the um, kale salad, what was the importance of ground like massaging your kale and what was that called? The nitro nitric oxide. Yes, the nitric oxide. I was nitrous. Nitric oxide. Yeah, nitric. <laughs> nitric oxide. What's this? You massaged the kale to bring that out? Uh huh. Well, no, the nitric oxide is in the raw kale, but a lot of times people don't like raw kale because it has a bitterness to it. Uh -huh. And that's actually what makes it healthy for you is that cruciferous sulfur mm -hmm. compound. Sure. Um, but yeah. what we found is if we sprinkle it with a little bit of acid like lemon juice or vinegar and you massage it, it's still raw, but all that bitterness just disappears. Oh, nice. And the texture gets real nice and soft and the color just turns bright, bright green. Oh. Wow. So I like to make the kale and beet salad at Christmas time because the beets are bright red and the kale is bright green. It's a beautiful oh. salad. Nice. Very cool. Thank you. Yes. And I have that recipe if you want to attach it, Paul, with other stuff you're sending out. Sure. Yeah. Send it over. That'd be great. Sending you anything else? Um, you got everything else, right? You got all the... I think we've posted most bites. things. Wow, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> looking at these, I would have been like, oh, maybe a couple more minutes, but they don't need any more time. So I pulled, I pulled my breadcrumbs out of the oven, but you can, because some of them, like, say, for instance, like, this is, it's pretty, like, um, it's, it's toasted on the outside, but it's still very, like, chewy, and in fact, that's going to make really good, like, dump material, like, dump oh, yeah. there too. But then, like, the outside of it is still, like, very, like, cold, and then, oh, and you can hear it. Doesn't it sound different? <laughs> yeah. It's really hot, but if you want to try one, you totally can. Maybe I'm try this. Oh, yeah. Try the inside. You got it? Yeah. Nice. Now, if, you want, if, if you want to just print some sauce, you can, but you don't have to. They sound good <laughs> like they are. <laughs> He's like, hold on, I need another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to my other arm, my hands are winding down. Yeah. So how you can kind of tell with your potatoes is sometimes what I'll do in my soup, I, oh sorry, what I'll do in the soup is kind of like use my spoon and press it on the side and do that a couple times to see if the potatoes in the um, rutabagas are tender enough. And Carolyn, I know did you just put your soup on? Yeah. Okay, so no problem. So what you, do you have your heat up high? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I had to test the rutabaga. It's good, it's, I'm good. Awesome. But wait, wait, I didn't put the turmeric in yet. Okay, so you can put a half a tablespoon or you can start small and go up. Um, so you are you have your soup boiling? Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. Have you started with your have you started your bird pounds yet? No, I'm gonna leave that for after the show. Okay, okay. Cool. Awesome. But yeah, they're just like, oh, and I like that they're so chunky, they're so rustic, they're just like, oh. And when it comes with good bread, you're like, oh, the thing you need is some olive oil and some um, and some herbs. Some time. Nice. Yeah, I could just sit here. I know. You're like, I think I'm going to have a I want one. Just knock on those. Yeah. yeah. So, like, um, when I was doing this, I'm like, oh, like, do I want to just grow cheese? But I'm like, no, this is not like a soup for grilled cheese. Yeah. Right. But it is like a soup for some really good um, bread. Um, so, I'm going to just put it on the side. Yeah. Yeah. But I like that they're so chunky. They're so rustic. How is everybody soup looking? Are your vegetables becoming tender? Look yeah. good. Okay. Everybody with their video off doing good? Hopefully. I'm we're we'll, we'll yes. assume you're doing good yes. and let Jamie, how are you doing? We have thumbs up. Awesome. Thanks, Joanne. Cool. Oh my gosh. Oh. 
Oh, Jamar, I want to butt in really quick because I forgot the beginning. I wanted to thank uh, one of our community partners here, um, Advanced Health, um, and Jamar again, because Jamar pretty much wrote the grant. But the library recently <laughs> received a $3,000 grant from Advanced Health to provide free vouchers at this program for a year. So we'll have 10 vouchers available every month on the Thursday before the program for a whole year. Um, we are taking the November and December break while we kind of regroup. Um, around the loss of our beloved Jamar. But, oh my um, gosh, stop, that doesn't so bad. <laughs> Sorry, oh I had to get one more in. Oh. Oh <laughs> uh -huh. but, but yes, uh, we just wanted to thank Advanced there. Health for this generous grant and uh, we'll be giving it all back to the community. Are we doing some kind of formal funeral for Jamar? <laughs> I, I think Joanne might be on her third glass of red wine now. <laughs> Good, thick blood cells. That's right. what we need, guys. <laughs> I really do love Jamie's comment. She said you have to come back at least one time because you didn't use smoked paprika tonight. Oh, my God. That's not what we did. Yes. And I didn't even use cumin. No, that's can right. You didn't. Can you believe it? So here's how my soup looks. Throwing us it's off, hearty, man. It's hearty. And look at my kale. It's just like every soup is going to have some kale, which is great. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it smells really good. And it's like, okay. So you're gonna um sir, I have to get some bowls. Okay. Real quick, Jamar, Joel said, uh Joel said, ready to eat. Thanks for the great classes. Good luck in your next chapter. Thank you, Joel. We're gonna make you cry tonight. <laughs> I will not cry on camera. Well, I might. <laughs> but I will not cry on camera. Or like, I think the only person in the co op who is in the is. My boss. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, Jamar, it's gonna be okay. I'm like, it's not. <laughs> but no, uh, this is this is cool. And the cool thing about it is that I get to um I get to continue being with the co-op. Like that's something that I get to absolutely. And Michelle, we will resume these in January. Okay, so I'm gonna start plating and folding up my up my soup. And so how I'm going to do it is I want to just kind of like get some of everything. Mm -hmm. Joanne said, we'll miss your great smile and how you make this class so fun, Jamar. Thank you. So thank you so much. And so I have this. Now it's like, OK, which, which bread crumb do I want? <laughs> 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 She's gonna hand pick yeah. each one. And, and I'm a fan of three. So, but tonight I'm gonna put four. I just wanted to remind everybody you have my email and your Zoom confirmation. Please send me pictures of your uh soup. We'd appreciate it. Nice. So I have like yeah. a soup and then I have my chunky bread crumbs around. And what's really gonna be really delicious is it's gonna soak up the broth. And then it's still going to be crispy on top. So oh, yeah. Michelle said, "Beautiful." So I'm going to it's wait. so hearty and rustic yeah, looking. Right. It's right. so comforting looking. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're wet coming in from outside, and, and you're like, oh, "Hey, yeah. pull up a seat. We're having hearty food." Jamie said, "Yum. Thanks for everything." Hey. And thank you all for making this such an awesome program. That's why we're going to keep it going, right, Tim? Yeah. Oh yeah. And for a person that is like, I've never had rutabagas before, they wouldn't even know that it was in here. <laughs> That's true, yeah. So they, if they say, I don't eat rutabagas, it's like, yes, you do. <laughs> totally do. Hey, Joshua, can you pull up a link to the community cooking playlist on YouTube so people will have recipes to keep them busy the next couple months? Playlist? Pretty awesome. All these recipes are on YouTube. Over, over two years now. Yeah. What do you want to make tonight? You just open that up. And Definitely. Hey, Deb. 
Hi there. How's it going? Good. Awesome. You had to walk in my brain. Well, good. <laughs> I bet it smells amazing in there. I gotta have some hydration. Are you hungry? Patricia said. Patricia said, um, "Thank you. I re I've really enjoyed all of these." All right. The playlist is on the uh, in the chat box. Um, just click on the link and you have you can see all the videos that Jamar has done. Thank you, Joshua. You're welcome. Jamar, I just want to say to from from me, Carolyn, thank you for the food that tastes good. Above all else, I love it. So good. <laughs> hey. And, and food is supposed to make you feel good, right? Thanks for joining us, Michelle. Hopefully we'll see you in January. And I'm gonna oh. and I'm gonna continue plating up because I know the store isn't closed yet, and I'm pretty sure we have some, some customers. You gonna give some customer soup? Yeah. So if y'all quick, nice. <laughs> you have your own soup at home. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a lucky customer. Right? <laughs> Especially on a day like today. It's like it's cold. Hearty soup day. If you have breadcrumbs left over, please feel free to like pull out a mason jar. <laughs> jar them up and then. So good, right? Mm. We have more than enough here. <laughs> Nana thank said, you, Thank Jamar. you very Hope much for everything. You thank you. Thank you. Good Thanks. night. Good night. Hey, Melissa. Oh, so good. So good. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Tim. Of course. All right, Mary, thanks for coming. She said, thanks to all. I look forward to your return next year. Best to Jamar. I've been cooking for a really long time, but I've still learned some fun stuff from you. I feel like my head's going to explode. I learned so much tonight. <laughs> Daphne, Patricia, how you guys doing? And the cool thing about it is like there's so much more soup. So like tomorrow is gonna be right? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. it's almost always better the second day. Yes. Yeah. Almost yeah. always. Yeah. So let's get to oh, the, the time and everything's just gonna be oh yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh. Well, this has been good. I guess uh, you guys will keep me informed of uh, what's happening in January and I'll Definitely. see you guys. All right. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of you between now and then. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Have a good Bye. night, Steph. Bye. Let me go ahead and stop the recording here.